Hi, I'm Sophia, and this is The Geek Group. Today we're doing a lesson on sewing knits. Specifically, we're going to take a giant extra large shirt and we're going to turn it into a dress. Now, the tools that I'm going to use for this uh, tutorial are on the table in front of me. First, I've got a pair of incredibly sharp fabric scissors. I've got a box of pins, a seam ripper, because inevitably I'm going to make a mistake and need one. A measuring tape, which is going to be really important for this tutorial, as well as some chalk. We're going to use a lot of math in this one, so be ready. I've got my snips to cut the threads on my machine, and of course, my safety dinosaur. Now the fabric I'm going to be working with today is this t-shirt. It's enormous. In fact, it's listed as an extra large, but I think they were going even bigger when they put this thing together. And I'm going to turn this into a dress. I'm actually going to make a dress for myself because I'm here and that's easy. Uh, but uh, the techniques I'm going to use can be used by anybody to make um, a fitted t-shirt for both men and women or dresses for ladies. Um, you can also turn this into clothing for kids as well. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is turn this inside out. And then I'm going to lay it out nice and flat in front of me. This shirt doesn't have side seams. That's actually re really an advantage with the activity that I'm going to do, but it doesn't totally matter. Now it's true that I'm only four foot two, but that doesn't really change what I'm going to do to this piece of fabric. So even if you're taller than me, it's not going to make a difference. You're still going to follow the same procedure. You're going to take the same measurements. It's just the numbers on your measurements will be different. Now the design that I'm going to use in making this outfit is one that is particularly good for curvy girls or girls with an apple or a pear shape. It's less good for girls who are hourglass shaped or who are really, really skinny and straight. Um, there is an adjustment you can make that's more appropriate for those body types, but the one I'm showing you today is really good for the body types I just mentioned. I'm going to draw a little picture for you to show you what I mean. So, if you are apple shaped, your body looks like this. And if you are pear shaped, your body looks like this. And if you are curvy shaped, your body looks like this. This is what is known as an hourglass figure. Now, the pattern that we're going to use, the shape that we're going to use on this t-shirt is going to be different if you're this two body types versus this body type. And quite frankly, I could put the really slim body type over here too because it's going to be the same for those two. Here's the t-shirt. I want you to imagine that this right here is the bust line. And this right here is the waistline. If I'm one of these two body shapes, I'm going to go like this. I'm going to bring in the sleeve because I'm not that wide. I'm going to dart in here and my narrowest space is going to be across the bust line. And this is just underneath the bust. On me, it's right here. And then I'm going to go straight out to the side in a diagonal. This is an appropriate shape for these two body shapes. 
If you're one of these two body shapes though, you really want to accentuate the waist area. So your cut is going to be a little bit different. For you, you're going to come in like this, and then your narrowest point is going to be at the waist. And what that's going to do is really accentuate and draw in at the waist and <clears throat> show uh, the difference between your hip and bust size compared to the waist, which is very appealing. So those are the two basic shapes for this style of dress. I'm going to be doing this one. I need to kind of set up a grid on this t-shirt so that I know where to cut. And the first measurement I need to take on myself is where exactly my underbust is. Now because this is a knit fabric, I don't really have to take into account the amount of room that I would need in the fabric to accommodate my bosoms. The fabric itself will stretch over that area. If you were doing the same pattern in a woven fabric, you'd have to take into account putting extra fabric in your pattern piece to accommodate for that area. Otherwise, there's just not enough room. I'm going to measure from the top of my shoulder to just under my bosom. It should be about 14 inches. Yep, 13 inches. And then I'm going to measure on the t-shirt from the top of the shoulder to 13 inches. And I'm going to mark it with chalk on both sides. I'm using a nice light chalk because this is a dark colored shirt. All right, so that's 13 inches on both sides. I'm also going to measure from uh, just under my arm to just under my arm across the front. It's important to do it this way and not all the way around your torso because your front can be larger measurement than across the back. And that comes out to about 17 inches. So I know that from the sub center point, I'm going to need 17 inches from here to here. I'm going to find the middle of the shirt by folding it. And I'm going to mark it with a pen along that fold line. So I know from this pin on both sides, I need a total of 17 inches. Now, if I do math, that's eight and a half on each side. And if I don't do math, I fold the actual tape measure. So this piece right here is going to be the narrowest part of this dress, and it's positioned right under my bosoms. Now to do the skirt on this dress, I'm just going to draw a diagonal to this corner and this corner. You can see I've made this trapezoid shape. This is the shape that we've already used in the A-line skirt that we did last time. And that's a particularly flattering shape for me. I'm 
I'm going to move this over a little bit so you can see what I'm doing with the sleeve. I'm going to do the same thing on both sides. Now clearly, this isn't going to line up with my shoulder like it would on a person who was made to wear this shirt, or for whom this shirt was made. So I'm not even going to try to make that my shoulder. My shoulder is going to end right about here. I have really narrow shoulders. Instead, I'm going to cut off this whole spot and make a tapered sleeve. The narrowest point, once again, is going to be right where that measurement is, the under bust. I'm only going to go straight up about an inch. And then I'm going to come curving around like so. I'm going to make a very narrow sleeve. And these will be about three quarter sleeves on me. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I am kind of eyeballing it. You can cut one off and then lay it upside down on the other side and trace it if you want it to be exact or you can employ a great deal of math. Personally, I make an effort to avoid math whenever possible. But I am going to measure how big I made that cuff so they're the same on both sides. Looks like this cuff is five inches. And now I'm going to eyeball it to make sure that it looks mostly the same. If I were to measure straight from the armpit here, it's about three and a half inches. Yep, it's about three and a half inches on that side. That looks pretty good. So I'm more or less ready to cut this piece of fabric and make my dress. Now, I could bring this in a little bit. I could bring it out a little bit to make sure I have enough room for my seam allowance. Because this fabric is so stretchy, and I happen to know that my back is not quite as wide as my front, I'm going to cut along the line of the chalk that I drew. Uh, if you want to be safe, you can cut just outside the line, and then you can sew on the chalk. Uh, which is perfectly legitimate. You can always bring it in more if you need to later, if it's not tight enough. But once you've cut it, um, you can't add to it very easily. I'd also like to point out that I've made this part really wide. And I've done that because I am building bosom space into the pattern. This part right here will mean there's more fabric in this part right here, which means there's more fabric to go over the girls. Just to be safe, I'm going to pin the front and back together along the cut line. Knit fabric is notoriously sort of wiggly. Oh, see that? I didn't even pin it. I'm going to do that now. 
If you notice that you forgot something like that, you can always go back and do it. And just to be sh I, it doesn't matter what direction the pins go in. Like these ones, I went along with the cut, and these ones are perpendicular to it. It doesn't matter at all. I'm just holding the fabric together. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is go over to my sewing machine and sew up these sides. I'm going to turn these pins first so that they're perpendicular all the way around, and that'll save me a step later. I'm going to start with a straight stitch, and then I'm going to go back and get the edge with a zigzag stitch. This is absolutely required in knit fabric. You can't get away without putting that zigzag stitch in there. I'm going to go back and forth at the beginning and end to knot the thread. I'm running the presser foot along the edge of the fabric, which is giving me a half inch seam allowance. That means there's a half an inch between where my thread goes into the fabric and where the edge of the fabric is. With knit fabric, it's really important that you make sure there's not a lot of tension on the fabric. If you put tension on the fabric, you can uh, actually stretch it and then it'll be sewn in that stretched position. If you have a serger machine, you don't need to worry about this. Sergers were designed to sew knit fabrics together. I'm not using a serger. There's one side.
Now that I've got my straight stitch in, I'm going to go back and zigzag. I want the zigzag to be as close to the straight stitch as I can get it. Okay, I'm going to go back to the table and show you about easing. We're actually done with our dress. It was that quick. However, there's one more thing we need to do in order to make it look right when it, you put it on. And that is to make tiny little cuts along these curves. Anytime you have a sewn in curve, you need to do this. And what you're going to do is put a cut about every half an inch up to the zigzag line, but not through the zigzag line. You're going to do it from where it goes straight to where it goes straight, all along the curve. It doesn't matter if you have a curve that goes in like this or a curve that goes out, you still have to do it. This is especially important around collars and armpits. If you accidentally snip the zigzag, not a problem. It, nothing will happen. You'll be fine. I'm going to turn this dress inside out and show it to you. There we go, that's what it looks like. If I hold it up to me, it's 
going to look like that. It's going to come in just under my bosom. But you know what? We're not done. And we're not done because we have scraps. And as long as you have scraps, you have the potential to do exciting things. Now, for me, I like pockets. So the first thing I'm going to do is add pockets to this dress. I'm going to show you how to do that now. You may remember from previous episodes that we took apart a red t-shirt. We did this in the t-shirt autopsy to see how t-shirts were made, what the shapes were. And we're going to use this t-shirt now to make the pockets. The neck of the t-shirt is going to become the place where our hand goes in the pocket. It's going to be super cool. You're going to be impressed. Now, the front of that t-shirt is longer than the back of that t-shirt, so I have to put the, back, the front down first and the back on top of it before I do my cutting. This is the right side of the t-shirt. I know because I can look at it and see that the nice stitching is on this side. So I'm going to put right sides together. Now it's true that this one's a little wider and this one's a little narrower and technically that's a problem, but I don't want to throw out all this good fabric just because of that little irregularity and I don't think it'll make a big deal in the finished gar garment. Smoothing the fabric is really important. You don't want any wrinkles in there when you start to cut. Now, you're going to have to use your imagination here because your head is telling you that this is a neck and my head is telling me that this is the side of a pocket. Believe it or not, this is the bottom of the pocket. I'll try to draw that so you can see it. And this is the bottom side of the pocket. This is the opening my hand's going to go through. And that's the top of the pocket. that's going to be the center of the pocket. It's going to be a pretty big pocket. I'm going to take some of that off because I'm not that wide. Okay, now I'm going to cut. Now the first thing I need to do, and I'm double checking that right sides are together, is to sew this pocket down the center. I have to sew it with a straight stitch and then a zigzag.
Now it's beginning to look more like a pocket. The pocket itself will look like that. So the next thing I'm going to do is sew this down to the front of the dress. I want the pocket to hit at about hip level, so I'm going to measure where that is. I'm going to put the measuring tape at the top of my shoulder, and I'm going to drop it straight down to my hip, which is about 21 inches. I'm very irregular. Ugh. See, this is what I should have checked before I zigzagged. I've got a little bit of a fold there, which I'm going to have to take care of. So this is the glories of seam rippers. It's why we have them. I'm going to seam rip that piece out, and I'm going to re-sew it. Unfortunately, since I didn't check, I have to seam rip out the zigzag as well. There, that's looking better. All fixed. Now I am going to have to be careful not to sew this pocket to the front and the back, but just the front. And I think stylistically, I'm going to take off most of this top part because I don't like the way it looks. So I'm going to cut from the top of this collar to the top of that collar. Now I do want to fold these edges down before I pin them. And I am going to line this pocket up with the actual stripes on the garment. Even if the stripes aren't straight, it'll be visually irritating to anyone looking at it if it doesn't line up with the stripes. And since this is just something I'm going to wear to be comfy on a Saturday and not you know, try to be super fashionable in. I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'm actually going to work this sideways so I can put my hand inside the dress and make sure that it's only going through the top layer of fabric. 
I also need to eyeball it and make sure that I've got it centered. That's 20 inches along that purple line. So I want the seam to be at 10, which is about where I put it. I tell you, I got great visual skills. I'm going to fold this down first and then I'll zhuzh the end so it looks neat. Incidentally, this is more or less how you apply a pocket to anything when you're sewing the pocket down on top. having some trouble with the under layer lying flat. Sometimes you just have to kind of massage it. There we go.
Once again, the newer you are to sewing, the more pins you should have. Now, I am going to reach over and grab my special heart pins so I know where to stop sewing and where to start sewing. There we go. Because I don't want to get distracted and start sewing down this opening, which is supposed to be the pocket. So I'm going to put some heart pins in there just so that I remember. Don't sew from here to here. Plus these things are so cute. And cute makes me happy. I can say from experience that if you've been sewing for more than four hours and you're kind of tired or it's late at night or you're sewing after you get home from work, little heart pins like this can really save you a lot of trouble because if you're not paying really close attention, it's easy to sort of get into the habit of sewing. You're just in the groove and you're just going and going and going and you just sew your pockets closed. I'm going to go sew now. Now, this machine has a feature where it can take off this front panel, and that means that I have a part that comes, kind of a peninsula that comes out here, and I can put the fabric around that base. That's really convenient when I'm trying to sew this pocket to only one side of the dress. Now, this video is in our more advanced sewing uh, lessons because there's going to be turning of fabric and all kinds of business that is a little more advanced. I'm going to start at the end with the straight stitch. I'm going to be going through a lot of fabric so I have to be gentle with it. I'm going to put it on medium. I need the needle to be in the fabric. I'm just going to do it manually. There's a setting on this machine that will do it if I push the button, but I don't know this machine well enough. You want the needle to be in the fabric when you rotate the fabric so that it all stays in the same place. Double checking that my back isn't caught up in there. I'm rotating the fabric and I see a heart pin which tells me that I really need to stop when I get to the edge. Now I'm going to do the bottom.
Each time I come to a corner, I put the needle in the fabric before lifting the presser foot to rotate it. Okay, back to the board. Okay. There's our pocket, just big enough for my little hands. It looks pretty good, actually. It's a nice color compared to the rest of this dress. Um, but we're not done because this dress clearly needs a hoodie. So that's what we're going to do next since we still have red fabric left. And it is environmentally conscious when you use up all the fabric that you have. Plus, I know lots of you out there like hoodies. So I wanted to make sure that you knew how to make one. I'm going to use this finished edge as the uh, face part of the hoodie. This is the wrong side of the fabric. I'm going to use the right sides up. Now, on this edge, I have the right sides together, and I have uh, right sides together and wrong sides on the outside. Now, because I've already cut this fabric, and because I'm using white thread so you can see what I'm doing, the seam across the top of the hoodie is going to be really obvious, and there's not a whole lot we can do about that. Um, if I were using red thread, it would be much less obvious. But I am going to sew it down, and I'll show you how to do that. Before I go any further, though, I want to show you what the pattern for a hoodie looks like. Believe it or not, I looked this up on the internet on my phone about 20 minutes ago. Right now we're in uncharted territory. I've not actually sewed a hoodie to anything before. But I have it on firm advice from the internet that knows everything. That you take a box like that and you draw a line like this. That is approximately most of the width of the collar. This part right here is going to be the finished edge of our hood, which we already have. And then all I need to do is draw an arc. Now, if I want a pointy elf hat, I'm not going to draw an arc. I'm going to go out here like this in a point and back to there. So if you need an elf hat hoodie around Christmas, this is how you make one. You know you want one. Think about it. It might be striped. How cool would that be? You could just keep going. You could add fabric. We're not going to go there. There could be a bell on the end or a tassel. Think about it. So that's the shape I'm going to draw and chalk on the fabric. Now I measured from the top of my head to about where the neckline of the dress is, which is here, nice and loose. And that came out to 19 inches, so I'm going to go with 20. But I'm going to split it in half, which is 10, because there's going to be a seam at the top, and there's two pieces of fabric here, which means that my hoodie is going to be that tall, which seems really small to me. 
So I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to make it at least a foot. Not because I need a foot, but because I can always take away. I can't add fabric very easily. Now I do need to do some measuring on this neck again. And I have to make some executive decisions. Do I want to sew this to the darker purple part here, or do I want to sew it to the stripy part on the inside? What are your thoughts? I think so too. I'm going to sew it to the inside. I'm going to start right here at the tag so that I know that I'm starting at exactly the same place as I finish. And I'm going to measure the inside of this neck. Let me see if I can do that so that the cameras can actually see what I'm doing. I'm basically starting there and I'm just going to work my way around the neck. I'm going to hold the tape, lay out the neck, run the tape along the edge there. Have to be careful not to uh, stretch it too much. Now this would be the time to own a serger. I know they have a serger here at the Geek Group, but I don't know how to use one because I don't own one and I've never used one before. So I'm not going to use it for this project. Most of you will not have sergers as well. Looks like we're at 24 and a half inches. Okay. So that means that this curve that I'm going to write in right here, this curve needs to be 12 and a little bit because 24 divided in half is 12. At least that will be really symmetrical with the top. So there's 12 in a little bit. And I think I'm going to measure from here and make sure that's at least 10, which it is. Let me make this a little bit bigger just to be safe. Let me see if I can make that dark enough for you to actually see on the screen. I know this is a really violently red. Okay. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm sure that our fabulous film crew can uh, digitize it later. Here we go. I'm going to pin around this curve.
So I'm going to sew along this curve with a straight stitch and then a zigzag stitch and then I'm going to cut the snips into it to ease it because it's a curve. This time it's an outside curve instead of an inside curve. Now I'm going to zigzag. So I appear to have a hood. Here's my hood. I'm going to attach it to my dress. To attach it, I'm going to have to use a zigzag stitch only because I need this neck to be able to expand over my head when I put the dress on. I'm going to start at the center back and I'm going to work towards the front. I'm actually going to take a minute to think about this. If I turn the shirt inside out and I place the hood inside out and upside down, I should be able to pull it out right side out. So I'm going to try that. I know that didn't make any sense to you, but when you see it, it might make more sense. So here's the base of the hood. I don't want it to be like this. Yes, I do. No, I don't. How do I want it? I don't want it like this. I want it inside out. I want the right side towards me for this operation because when I flip it up, then the right side will be with the right side of the shirt. I'm assuming the center of the tag is the center of the back. That is not always true. But for the purposes of today's demo, it's true. If you really care, you can measure it. Let me stand up so you can see what I'm doing.
Okay, I don't really know how this is gonna turn out, but I'm trusting the internets, so let's go find out. Remember, we're gonna use a zigzag stitch. I'm fitting the neck around that peninsula that is created by uh, the machine and how it's set up. Okay, I'm gonna check the inside of the neck to make sure that I didn't catch any fabric before I step away from my machine. Looks like I did a really good job of following the seam of the neck. So we'll find out how it looks when I take the pins out. I've been doing pretty well on this show so far. But I will say that even as an experienced seamstress who's been making her own patterns on clothes for over 20 years, I still have an 80% success rate. That means if I make 10 garments, eight of them turn out perfectly and two of them get smaller and smaller as I cut them up repeatedly trying to make them into something that works. So that's just how it goes for me. You shouldn't be too discouraged if you try something and it doesn't work perfectly the first time, that's your learning curve. And every single time that that has happened, I've learned something really important about working, working with fabric or about the pattern I was trying to make or about how to fit things to my body. So try not to get discouraged when that happens. Okay, it looks like we have a finished garment, and this hoodie came out pretty well. I've got three quarter sleeves on there. I've got a nice hood, one that'll go all the way around my head, hopefully. Um, because there's no way to make this look pretty, if it was me, I'd probably put a ribbon over it and sew the ribbon down. There are other ways to finish that seam as well to make it really nice, but they're more advanced than we called for here. And there we go. That's the front right there with the pockets. And here's the back with our hood. I think it could have made the hood a little bit bigger, but it'll probably fit just fine. There we go. Now, this technique can be used to turn a really big t-shirt into a dress but it can also be used to tailor a t-shirt to your body. And that's when I wanna go back to this picture right here. What we have here is how to make a large t-shirt into a dress, but you would do the exact same thing if you were making a t-shirt that's only a little bit too big for you into one that fits you, especially here. When you see models and movie stars on television and they're looking absolutely fabulous in their t-shirts, it's because this has been done for them. The t-shirt has been tailored to them. It has been brought in at the waist. And if you're a gentleman, you're gonna do the exact same thing. You're just not gonna have such a dramatic 
um, indent right here. It's going to be more uh, a gentle curve. To fit a t-shirt for a guy, you buy one that's a little too big for you, not super big, but a little bit too big, and then you're going to bring it in to match your physique. Generally, a man's physique is narrowest way down at the bottom, right above the hip bone. So that's how you would tailor the shirt to make it fit you really well. And um, it'll look great when you put it on and it'll look like a movie star. And uh, who doesn't want to look like a movie star? So that's our lesson today on uh, tailoring t-shirts and making them into other things, adding pockets and a hoodie. And I'm Sophia and this is The Geek Group. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.